بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم when I speak my vocal cord vibrate or oscillate words are being formed by the throat tongue lips nasal cavity whatever and get amplified by the air cavity inside my chest and then the voice is coming out when the voice is coming out it will be transmitted through the air through the air molecules or particles now imagine that these are the air molecules in front of me this vibration will create pressure so that it will compress for example this molecule which will compress the one next to it and so on then it will go back in a refraction state this will continue in the air in front of me but each particle here will keep oscillating back and forth back and forth around its equilibrium position without being transmitted with the sound signal so when we look at the air particles we'll see each of them is vibrating oscillating on the equilibrium position back and forth and the energy wave is passing through the medium which is air air particles do not move with the sound wave otherwise if you are talking to somebody you may smell his mouth but it's not the case now this Produced sound can be produced by humans, as we mentioned, by hitting a string in a violin, by pumping air in the flute, by beating on a drum, by dropping an object, by a crash of an accident, whatever. This vibration will create a pressure signal in the air. We agree that sound can be transmitted through solids, liquids, gases. Our subject is about the audio frequency for humans in the air. Our medium is air. This sound wave has an intensity. Intensity is defined in general as the rate of change of energy per the unit area. Rate of change of energy joules per second, which is what? So we end up with what per square meter. And our hearing system is so super sensitive that if we have 10 to the power minus 12, which means 1 trillionth of what per square meter, this minor amount can be picked up sensed and here by you and this intensity can go up to one watt one watt in sound system is a huge amount one watt per square meter maybe will be the threshold of fame for you if one trillionth of what is picked by human imagine that when you are one trillion away one watt this one watt if divided by the area of egypt which is around one million kilometers squared still can be perceived by humans. So in this scale from one trillionth of watt per square meter up to one watt we have one trillion span, one trillion dynamic range. This is inconvenient maybe in more than one respect. One of them is this wide span, immense span and the other one is normally when we talk about sound we talk about sound pressure not in a sense this is what we translate into a glossary which is used in sound systems so this sound wave is creating a pressure in fact this pressure is not absolute it is the difference between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure imposed by the sound wave it's how much change in the atmospheric pressure this sound wave can make so if we are talking about the lowest pressure level that can be perceived by humans it's 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 pascal pascal is newton per square meter so 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 is 20 micropascal this 20 micropascal can be sensed and picked up by human how much is the value of the atmospheric pressure? It's 100,000 Pascal. Imagine that the atmospheric pressure is 100,000 Pascal and 20 micropascal. This minor change in this pressure can be picked and here by human. And this was measured, this value, and used as a reference in the threshold of hearing for humans. It was measured as the buzzing sound of mosquito three meters away from the person. In the upper limit, we can hear up to 200 Pascal. Again, we have an immense span from 20 micropascal up to 200 Pascal. This again is inconvenient to deal with. Now, there is a very beautiful thing in mathematics, which is logarithm. 
the algorithm replaces these numbers, these wide spread of numbers into nice numbers that we can deal with them easily. So based on the reference pressure level, which is 20 micropascal, the logarithm is 20 times logarithm of the pressure of the wave under consideration divided by this reference level. This decibel scale extends from 0 dB up to 120 or 130 dB from the threshold of hearing up to the threshold of pain. And normally this is the scale we are dealing in sound system. Very clear, simple scale that allows us to understand the sound pressure level. But we have to take into consideration that in this decibel scale, some things to be noticed. If I have sound level say 80 decibel, if I'm going to double the sound pressure level, this will not be doubled. This will be increased by only 6 dB. So it will be 86 decibel is double the sound pressure level obtained from the 80 decibel. Now we will see some examples of the decibel scale from the threshold of hearing, 0 decibel, up to the threshold of pain, 130, and even beyond that. After this, we will discuss the subject indicates. In the examples we just saw, you see a picture of the decibel level which reflects onto what we call loudness, sound loudness. If we are talking about loudness, this is okay. But if we are talking about how do we perceive loudness, other factors have to be taken into consideration. First is the frequency of the sine wave. We saw that the audio frequency range of humans is between 20 Hz and 20,000 Hz. But our sensitivity for this range is not the same. In the vocal range or speech range from 1 kHz up to 4 kHz, our sensitivity is high. And at the borders near the low frequencies or the extreme high frequencies, our sensitivity is less. And if you try to take a test for your hearing system and it's available in the web, you will notice that at the beginning you will increase the volume, then you will decrease the volume, then you will increase the volume, though the loudness was constant. The loudness is constant, but our sensitivity is different. So frequency is one important factor. The second factor is the distance from the sound source. We saw that sound propagates in spherical planes from the sound source. So you have like spheres around the center, which is the sound source. These spheres get larger and larger as you are going further from the sound source. So if we are, say, at one meter from the sound source, this sound pressure will be divided on an area from this sphere, the first sphere, which has a radius of one meter. Go further till you reach 2 meters. Now you are 2 meters away from the sound source. So the area now is 4 times as the first because it's the area of the surface of the sphere. So on, if you go 3 meters, it will get reduced to 9 times. So the distance from the sound source is very important. And even for the specifications for the machinery, like generator, transformer, or air conditioning unit, you will see that they will give you the noise level 60 dB, 70 dB at 1 meter, 7 meter, 6 meter. Distance is very important to correctly understand the loudness. Another important factor is the medium of transmission. Of course, we are talking about air as a medium of transmission, but even air is subject to the weather conditions and other things. A humidity will be a factor. Atmospheric pressure will be another issue. Temperature is another issue. But in general, for simplicity, we will take the air as air. Maybe you hear that when they were talking about the loudest animal in this planet. Before it was considered a blue whale, 
with 188 decibel, but now it's the sperm whale with 230 decibel. Those sounds are created in the water, and roughly we have to subtract around 60 decibel from this decibel level to be perceived by human. Another factor is the duration. We just give an example about the sperm whale with 230 decibel. But for how long? Only for 100 microseconds. It ends before it starts. While for the blue whale with 188 decibel, it's between 10 and 30 seconds. And the blue whale, again, the frequency is low frequency, around 20 hertz. While for the sperm whale, it's 10 kilohertz. Another very important factor is the ambient noise level. When we are in a factory, or in the theater, on the mall, workshop, kitchen, living room, street, wherever there is ambient noise level in these areas and if we are going to produce sound in these environments we have to go above this level otherwise the sound will be masked they call it masking you cannot hear it well it might happen sometimes while you are talking to your friend at the phone you request him to speak up to speak louder in order to bring his voice above the ambient noise level near him like tv set or people talking or whatever and this ambient noise level is very important factor in designing sound systems for different applications so these factors frequency medium transmission distance from the sound source duration and ambient noise level are very important to consider when we talk about perceiving the loudness the sound pressure